So I've been trying out this pocket cinema camera 6K for a little while now and it's really good but one of the biggest problems is that it doesn't fit on my gimbal. You can try to slide it on, you can move this all the way over and it still doesn't fit. The handle kind of blocks it from going in so then there's no way to balance it, there's no way to use it. So I ordered some stuff that should make it work and we're gonna test that out today. So. Thanks for joining, and let's get into it. All right, so our main goal is to get this camera on the gimbal, and we're gonna set up this hard drive to where we can actually utilize that 6K raw footage but we don't want everything flopping around and looking unprofessional and potentially getting messed up. So in order to solve our first problem, what we need is a offset plate. So what this is gonna do is it's going to allow us to just like scoot the camera over just a little bit and give it a little bit of extra room to where we can actually mount it on the gimbal safely and securely. Okay, so that mounts onto the camera gimbal plate. Just got this on the back. This base plate is gonna go under the camera. It's got a safety thing to where it's not gonna go too far over. And that just pops in and you can set it to wherever you want to with this little lock, kind of just like how they work on the gimbal. So now let's see if it works. All right, so I'm gonna mount this further back. All right, now we're able to scoot it over. So I'm gonna keep it as close as I can to this so that it's not too far off. Now, uh, there's gonna be a problem because the weight is way off-centered. So what we're gonna actually have to do is add some counterweights. So that's what I've got in this box. <laughs> Basically, you can just clamp this onto here. Huh, that's pretty cool. So immediately, it balanced itself, kinda. <laughs> that's awesome. If you want to see a whole video about balancing gimbals, check out my video linked up here. But I'm just going to do this real quick. It should work pretty much the same as a normal gimbal balancing situation. It's kind of nice actually, instead of having to move the whole plate, the whole arm like normal, you can just move that plate to balance this axis. Uh, it kind of takes a while, but... Uh, this will do the job. We actually do need to add one more thing to be able to use this camera optimally. So here's what we got. We've got a hard drive mounting plate. You can clamp your hard drive in like this, nice and secure. And then you're able to just plug this in right there and plug that into your camera. Also, it's got the quarter 20 mount right there so you can put this just straight on top of the camera. I'm gonna do it backwards so that our weight distribution is pretty good. USB is over here. Okay, so this thing is good to go. You could go start shooting right now and be totally fine. You've got the built-in NDs. You've got it balanced for this wide angle lens. Uh, you could use the 4K crop to get more focal lengths basically out of this lens too. Uh, kind of fun, but here's my two personal favorite upgrades. This one is a new one and this is one that I've used for a long time and Really really changed the game for me for using a gimbal and Doing client work and stuff you might have seen rumors that the battery life on this camera is Not that great, but I think for real estate shoots it's not gonna be a real big problem. You'll definitely wanna have at least two or three batteries as backup, but uh, this is something you might not have thought of. This whole gimbal is basically a giant battery, 
And with this cable, we can actually tap into that and keep the battery in the camera charged while we shoot. So this would be especially useful if you're doing lots of shoots per day or if you're doing really long shoots or if you're doing like weddings and stuff like that as well. So it just plugs in right there and then goes in over here to our 12 volt input. The same as the little charger that comes with it. So it just pops in, the light came on up here to indicate that it's charging. Essentially, it's gonna be the same as if you plugged into a wall outlet and it's gonna be recharging your battery that's in your camera while you're shooting. So pretty cool, as long as you're aware of your gimbal battery life and don't run out of that because that would probably be worse to have a gimbal that's dead and no backup battery. <laughs> Future me here probably was using the gimbal for about an hour and also was using the gimbal while I was recording the setup video for maybe 30, 40 minutes. Uh, so it started blinking and that made me worried that I need to recharge it because I don't want it to just shut off in the middle of filming and like drop the camera or something and you know, whatever. So definitely pros and cons for having the extended battery via the cable tap or having an extended battery via swapping batteries on the actual camera itself. You can access the batteries right there, so it's not really that big of a deal, but uh, if you're doing gimbal stuff where you need to record for like an hour straight while getting your shots and not stopping your footage, uh, it's definitely gonna be a lighter option to tap the battery compared to using like a battery grip with extra batteries in it and stuff like that. So there we go, that's it. Okay, so this is an extra one that you actually can't use if you're using the hard drive, unfortunately, but this is a camera control cable. So it plugs in to USB-C and also plugs into the gimbal right here. And so you would plug it in up here to the USB-C where the hard drive is plugged in right now. And it lets you use the little record button on your gimbal so that you can start and stop your footage and not waste as much of your data. So if you're doing stuff where you're doing a lot of start and stops, uh, it can really make you a lot more efficient and fast while you're at your shoots. So real quick, in case you're wondering how to dial in your settings, this is what I'm doing. So you can just literally click the plus and minus buttons to add a ND filter to change your exposure if you're going inside and outside really, really quick. And all I'm looking at is this histogram right here and you wanna make sure nothing's going too far to the left or the right. And I like the arc to be somewhere towards the center or just a little bit to the right to where it's a little bit brighter. I haven't edited a lot of the footage yet, so I'm still kind of getting the hang of it but using the histogram is always more reliable than going off of how the monitor looks. So as far as using manual focus for these videos, I've got the focus peaking turned on to where whenever something's in focus, it starts to turn red on the edges. So as you can see right here, these chairs in the kitchen, the edges kind of start turning red and that means that it's gonna be in focus. So for real estate, I like to focus somewhere towards the middle of the room. And that way, as you do your gimbal movement, the majority of your shot will stay in focus as much as possible. So that's it. I don't normally use manual focus for my video stuff, but uh, it's actually kind of cool. It's pretty easy. All right, so that's it for this one. I've been testing out the 6K Pro and I'm planning on doing a full review sometime in the near future. Um, I've been taking it everywhere with me basically. Uh, getting a lot more different types of shots, not just real estate stuff like some of my other review videos. So I hope it is a little more in-depth and more helpful for you if you're looking at getting this thing. So let me know if there's anything specific that you would want to have included in that review and I will try to cover as much as I can. So that's it for this one. If you're new, make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on future videos and Look forward to seeing y'all in the next one. I gotta go test this thing out and get some footage here. See ya.